Greetings. We will solve a puzzle submitted by Timothy Dunbar, a subscriber to this channel. If you have a puzzle you want me to look at, or a Sudoku question, leave a comment. In this video we use the trial and error technique when we can't progress on this puzzle. This puzzle is pretty tricky, so we're going to need to use trial and error on it. My name is Harold Nolte. I've been studying Sudoku for eight years now. There are over 150 videos in this channel. You can also go to the Sudoku Primer website for, to find techniques, patterns, and lots more Sudoku information. There's also a video index where you can go and look for videos with the specific skill level or technique that you're interested in learning about. So this technique we're going to use is trial and error and it's when you get stuck on a difficult puzzle and can't progress. Now when you're in that situation, let's say that you find a, um, a place where a one will fit in one of two cells in a box. With trial and error, what you do is you randomly choose one of those two cells, put the number in it, and then you uh, continue solving the puzzle as if that's the correct location. Um, just write a couple things here. Okay. Now with trial and error, uh, you do two things different. You use a pencil instead of a pen, if you use a pen normally, and you write the numbers really small. The reason you do that is if you chose the wrong cell for the, for the number that you're trying, that you're doing trial and error on, then you can erase the the numbers that you've placed in the that you've put in the puzzle during the trial and error. Now you can have one of three outcomes. One of three outcomes when you uh, when you do trial and error. Uh, the first is you can solve the puzzle. You, you choose one of the cells to put the number in and you continue solving and you finish by filling in all the numbers and it's, and it's solved. The second outcome is if you choose the wrong cell for that number you will eventually have a conflict and that's where you try and there's only one place for a number to go but there's already that same number there in that row column or box or um, <clears throat> or you just can't put numbers in correctly and that's pretty obvious when you get to that point uh, the last op uh, conflict um, outcome is oops you run out of numbers to place. And this can happen when you have a very difficult puzzle and you try a number and then you again get to the point where you can't progress anymore. In the first situation, the first outcome, you're done. You've solved the puzzle. The second one when you get a conflict is you erase everything then you place in the number in the in the second in the second cell and if there were only two places where it would go you would know that that is the right location for that for that number and in the third outcome where you run out of numbers you still don't know at that point whether that cell you chose is the correct one or not so yeah just have to erase all the numbers so for number two and number three 
you just erase everything and you and you continue on. You try something else. All right. Okay. Well, let's get started. I'm going to put in a few numbers here. This number, this 3 here, is pretty obvious. That's the right number. The 7 here, I know that is a 7 because these are 1, 2 twins here. So we have a 7 here. The 7 has to go here in this column, in this box. And so that is a 7. That's how we know that's a 7. Um, because of the 1, 2 twins, we found the 5 and 3 also. We have a 5 here and a 5 here, so that's a 5. And a 3 goes here can't go here. There's a 5 here, so it can't go there. So one of these is a 3, and then the 3 goes here. The 6 is um, a little bit tricky. Um, we use double row elimination in this section and double column elimination in this section to, uh, to find that 6. If you're not familiar with those um, techniques, double row and column elimination, go to sudokuprimer.com and look for a video on double row or double column elimination and it will explain what that is all about. Okay, so at this point we're pretty much stuck on this puzzle. Can't find any numbers that are easy to find. So I'm going to take my pencil now and I'm going to Um, try something here and this this example is uh, let me before I do this let me uh, show you what we have here we have one two twins here and four more cells that need numbers in this box box five, uh, box five here so the th there's a three missing the so three can go here or here there's a four missing there's a 6 missing, and a 6 can go in any of the 4 cells, and there's a 7 missing, so a 7 has to be in this column. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 6 7s here in those 2 cells, and what I'm trying is I'm trying to see if the 6 belongs in this column or not. The six can fit in any of these four with the information we have now. So if this works out, then we'll know the six goes here. Okay, so at that point where we can start solving or continue solving, a six there and six there. And notice that I'm putting the number making the numbers really small. There's an eight here, so that has to be an eight. That's a six. The, the, Four, five. The only two numbers that are missing in this box now are four and five. Okay. With a. Okay, so we got an eight here and an eight here. So that is an eight. That is an 8. We know this is an 8 because we've got an 8 here, got an 8 here. So the 8's in box 4 here are constrained to this column, column 2. Okay. So let's see, 6, 7. Now, if we know this is a 4 or a 5, we know these can't be 4 or 5, so that's a 4 right there. Okay, and a 4, 4, so there's a 4 there. Oh, wait a minute, we've got a conflict here. That's the only place a 4 can go, but we've already got a 4 in this column. So, we know, because of this conflict, that the six does not belong in this column. 
6 belongs in this column and the 6 in this box belongs in this column. Okay, so we had outcome number 2 here, a conflict. So at that point, we know what we learned was a 6 goes over here. It doesn't go in this column here. So now we have to erase everything. And that's why we use pencils and small numbers so we can see which numbers we filled in during the trial and, trial and error session. Okay. Let's try something else. Let's try another trial and error. There's a one, one. One of these two is a one. So I'm going to say, let's try that one. Okay, and with that one, let's try and fill in as much as we can. So one goes there. Now with our one, two twins there, we can solve them. And that's a one there. Okay, we got a one there. Oh, with that one, we know that this is an eight. What else do we know here? And we got a six here and a six here. Oh, we got a six there, so we know that is a six. No, that's a six there. here and a four here so we know that's a four right there and therefore that's a four all right now with this four here we know this is a four and we also know that's a six because we found out that these can't be a six here and we can finish box five here with a three and a seven. All right, now we know that this is a three here and a nine. That makes this a three. And we've got a two here in the row eight, so we know one of these is a two. We know this is a three here. Okay, now with this, these fours here, we know that's a four. And that's an eight. Okay, the only number left there is a 5. Okay, in this row here we're missing 2, 2 and 9 right here. We've got a corner pattern here, so we know that one of these is a 9, so we got 2 and 9 there. One of these is a two, so we know that's a two there. And that makes that a nine because we've got four and two there. So these are two and four. So that's a nine. We've got a seven there. And we can finish that box. We 
know that's a 9 right there. And that's a 7. Okay, so far this is looking good. We, um, we put a 1 here and we're able to find all these numbers. So, so far we haven't found a conflict, so we're looking good. Okay, now we got two, two eight left here. One of these is a seven. That has to be an eight there. That's a five. Okay, let's look at these right here. We're missing four, four, eight, and nine. So that's a four, nine, eight. Now we can see what's left here. Two, five, seven. Two, five, and seven. So that's a Two, five, seven. Okay, now we got a five and an eight missing there. Okay, we have seven and nine there. We have a six and a nine here we got a six and a nine there and a six and a nine there so we know these are six nine twins so. and now we got two fours there we found earlier and a five and that's it all right so with trial and error, we were able to solve this puzzle. It took a couple of tries. We were able to uh, determine that sixes go here when we ran into a conflict when we tried the sixes in this column, where we had six, seven twins here. We had a conflict right here with the four, so we knew that the six had to go in this column. So that's. Um, <coughs> And since we had a conflict, we erased all the pencil number, uh, the numbers we put in with pencils, and then we started over again with the one up here. And with that one, we were able to solve it. So, so that is the trial and error technique. And um, <clears throat> thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully that helped you understand what trial and error is and how how it works. Talk to you again.